Are we go? Maybe. Um. I think we're good. Okay, so um, one of the things I get asked about a lot is um, one of the things I really get asked about a lot is the various kinds of bookkeeping software that there are on the market. Um, and there are all kinds of bookkeeping software on the market. Um, the ones that I work with the most are QuickBooks and QuickBooks Online. They're the most commonly known ones, and they're the ones that, at least right now, I'm recommending. Um, one thing that I really like about, especially QuickBooks for the desktop, is that it's easy to back up and restore. Um, when you have online software, as nice as it is to be able to access it from anywhere, if you make a mistake, um, and you need to completely start over in your books, it can be a lot more challenging. Um, so I, I personally prefer QuickBooks for the desktop. Um, I find it very easy to use. I usually have about 10 windows open at any time. Um, and it's easy to find and fix the mistakes, you know, pr provided it, you're good with the software. Um, there's not a whole lot that can't be done in QuickBooks that I have found. Um, I have looked at other software platforms, especially the ones that are on the cloud. I know that's kind of the direction everybody wants to go these days. Um, the problem that I found is that in the transition, it can be really challenging. Um, if you start off with that software, then you're golden. Um, in 2006, when I started my very first company, I used QuickBooks Online and I had um, I had mixed feelings about it even then, and it was it was just me, and I just do contract work, and I just have a few clients, and um, it's uh, it's not like I had hundreds of accounts or anything like that. It was it's fairly simple, straightforward bookkeeping, and even in two thousand and six, I I just felt like um, Ooh, that's too much, like. Um, that was too much. I just felt like QuickBooks Online just wasn't robust enough for what I wanted it for, and that not just for me, but for my clients. Um, some of the things that you need to look for in any accounting software that you're using, um, there are all kinds out there. You need to make sure that it's one, it's easy to use. Um, and another one is that it's easy to get your data out of it. Oddly enough, um, even if you're 100% committing to that software, you need to know that at, if at any time you need to remove your data or back up your data, if you, you know, maybe you don't trust that particular provider, um, you know, it's just it's just peace of mind to know that you can export that data and download it, and it's still there, and it's still, it's still yours. Um, and I think that's absolutely critical. In fact, I, um, I've been talking to a couple of accounting software companies. They have their, um, all of their stuff is on the cloud. And I think that's wonderful. I love being able to extend user privileges to my, to my clients. But uh, a couple of them don't have that ability to export those files and uh, put them back into QuickBooks or to to have some way of backing them up and being able to use them. And that is one of the things I very much like about QuickBooks. One of my frustrations with QuickBooks is that um, once you roll forward, you can't roll backwards. Does that make sense? Once you decide to get, like this year is 2017, um, once you decide to get 2017s, there is no ever going back to that and switching back to 2016. You're kind of um, you know there, there's no going back and switching to it. 
sorry, you guys. I'm just, I'm trying to do a couple of things all at once. What I need is like, um, you don't need to see my dirty kitchen. Um, what I need is a personal assistant. I'm almost to that point. Um, what I don't like about QuickBooks is if you, uh, for one thing, QuickBooks Online will make changes and you're kind of stuck with them whether you wanted them or not. Um, and that's just the nature of online software. That's not necessarily a criticism, it's just the way it is. Um, but with QuickBooks Desktop, let's say I have uh, a file from 2013, this year's 2017, I want to open it in new software. Uh, so I open it in this year's software. Well, if I send it back to my client and they still have 2013, they're out of luck. They have to buy the new QuickBooks. That is the one thing that I really don't like about Intuit is that that's, that's just how they roll. Um, you know, and I'm not a fan of that. Uh, I really need to get a good background. But that's kind of the nature of the beast. You know, if you have the most recent um, software than everyone else that uses it typically um, Office doesn't do that, which I really like, but most of the accounting software I've heard of, you know, you have to have the most recent one, and they don't like to roll it back to an older version. Um, there's usually workarounds for that. Here's, here's what I look for when I'm looking at um, accounting software, and, and I've tried several. I mean, I, I've worked with QuickBooks. Uh, since they had a market share, which was about 1999 uh, is when I really started to work with QuickBooks, and they started developing their market share in 97-98. So, you know, I, I kind of joke and say I, I can literally work in QuickBooks with my eyes closed, and other uh, accounting software, I do need my eyes open, but at the same time, I, I usually pretty well got it. Um, the trick is not to be afraid of it. Um, here's the thing with accounting software. If you understand the underlying principles, you will always be able to get it right. Um, I always go back to, you know, I want to know, does the, does the person I'm working with, do they know a debit from a credit? Do you know what debit and credit means? Here we go. Debit means left, and credit means right. Um, and just to kind of go over that, you know, I would, I, you know, when when I go to start looking for more bookkeepers, that's the first thing I want them to know. Do they know the difference between a debit and a credit? Do they know what an income account is, and do they know what a contra income account is versus an expense account? Why would we use a contra income account? Um, I have known people that have degrees in accounting. I've even known people that have CPA licenses that actually know less about accounting than I do because I've just been in the trenches and the day-to-day -day business of bookkeeping. That's what I do. That's just um, that's just what I do. And I think it's important for everyone to um, to understand that when you have someone who's highly experienced, a lot of times. I, I just know all this stuff because I've seen it, and I've seen it firsthand, and sometimes it's because I've made the mistakes and had to fix them. And there's nothing like that to just burn it into your brain. Um, I'm excited to get the software up and going. I hated, hated broadcasting from my phone every time. Um, I'm going to have to put this on my laptop, too. That'll be really nice. It's better cameras. Um, so... One of the things that I want to know is how, how is the general journal or the general ledger? Um, is it difficult to work with? If I can work with the general ledger with ease, that means that sometimes I need to make a transaction and save it, go back and check my work, and then maybe switch the debits and credits around. It does happen that I will get them backwards sometimes. I mean, I'll know what I'm doing, but just put them in the wrong field. Um, I want to know that I can undo any mistakes 
or any changes that I make fairly easily. Um, when I'm working with cloud-based software, I will frequently have several tabs open to that software so that I can go back and, and review and refresh and make sure that everything looks the way I want it to look. Uh, I want to make sure that the reports make sense to me. Sometimes they're presented. It's not that the information doesn't make sense, but the presentation of that information needs to really make sense to me. I've seen some accounting software that actually, instead of having a proper statement of cash flows, um, I think it was the profit and loss. They labeled statement of cash flows, and that didn't make sense to me because I know what a cash flow statement should look like. Um, I want to see that um, that debits and credits are properly accounted for. Of course, most I mean, I've never seen an accounting software not do that. I want it to make sense though. When I'm looking at a check register, I just want to see the check register. You know, if I'm looking at the general journal, I just want to see the general journal. Um, I have yet to see an accounting software that I can't work with, which is kind of nice. Um, I remember when QuickBooks was not the leading software. I have, uh, and you know, the odds are pretty good in the next couple of years I'm going to move away from QuickBooks pretty permanently because I'm not excited about the direction they're taking their company. Um, again, they're going, I think they're going almost entirely to the cloud and while there are applications for that, um, and I think that should certainly be an option. For one thing, I don't like that they market QuickBooks online with the QuickBooks name because my clients go in there and they think they're getting QuickBooks, like, you know, the desktop. And QuickBooks Online is, is good software, but it is not the same as QuickBooks Desktop. But because Intuit's it's trying to have this continuity of branding, and I understand why they're doing it, um, it can be really frustrating to try to explain to someone that QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Desktop two entirely different softwares with entirely different capabilities. Um, I have not seen QuickBooks Online be very good for contractors, for example. If they need to create estimates and do progress invoicing, then they're not going to be very happy with QuickBooks Online. They're going to want QuickBooks Desktop or another software that does the same thing. Um, also, I think QuickBooks is going to start losing their market share. However, uh, I did notice one of the leading um, softwares that's up and coming is Xero, X-E-R-O, and they're great. I have used it. Um, I'm not sure yet how I feel about them. Um, started off being pretty excited, but there's been some, some hiccups that have rendered me somewhat less than excited. Um, they're certainly a good option. Um, I've just noticed that a lot of these CEOs are coming out and they're making political statements, which they have every right to do, but they also need to understand that people on the other side of the political aisle um, may choose to not use their their product because of that, um, regardless of which side you're on. So <laughs> it's just something I think that uh, CEOs probably should be quiet about. Um, but that's just me. I was raised in an era when you didn't talk about money, religion, and politics, except with your closest friends. So there you go. Um, again, I look for ease of use. I look for ease of backing out. I look for an audit trail that's easy to look, easy to find, and that I can pull up and see. Um, especially in a multi-user environment, I want to see which user did what so that I can find out, you know, if there was a mistake made, you know, if someone went in and, and deleted a register or an account that I really needed, then I want to know, I want to know who did it and why. At least I want to know who did it so I can find out why. Um, and I want those reports to be easy to drill into and to be easy to understand. And the big three are the balance sheet, the profit and loss, which is also called an income statement, and the statement of cash flows. 
And if those three are easy to understand, and if I can get to, excuse me, other reports, such as you know a deposit detail is extremely helpful, um, especially with clients that have a lot, a lot of sales or sales receipts that I'm tracking, or clients that I'm doing invoicing for. I want to be able to see the deposit detail so that I can see, and I need to be able to change it so I can see that. Um, you know, which which invoices were included on what deposit, and if there was cash left over that I couldn't account for otherwise, if cash controls aren't um, very tight. Um, I have had that happen with, with clients where we didn't know where an invoice, how an invoice had been paid, but it turned out to be paid in cash, and I had to go back and find the cash that I had deposited, and I and I knew it belonged somewhere, so I didn't assign it to a specific invoice until I knew exactly which invoice to assign it to. Um, and so, you know, that's where the deposit detail gets very helpful. I want to see the eight, uh, accounts payable and receivables, aging summaries, and the details. And I want to be able to, you know, what's really nice about QuickBooks um, I, I've always kind of joked that I can make QuickBooks do anything you want it to do short of cooking your breakfast. And maybe even that if I really try to figure it out. There are some awesome capabilities in QuickBooks. And I know that other software does have it. Um, one is that I can export uh, an Excel spreadsheet um, for an entire year. I can break it out by month. I can show you how, what kind of changes you've had. I can budget. I can, um, you know, and I, and I talked about budgeting before, and I'm going to talk about budgeting again. So I can budget in QuickBooks, and that's kind of a big deal. I can um, forecast your budget for you. Now, that doesn't mean that you are required to stick to it, to the penny. It's your business. But, you know, it's really nice to be able to um, you have a really good idea of where that money should go. Um, again, this is, this is things most accounting software can do. Um, but it's really nice to be able to tell my clients that, yes, I can, I can pull your sales by month or by quarter or by year. I can show you whether it rose or fell. Um, I can show you, you know, the percentage of changes in your revenue. I can show you, you know, whether or not you have what your percentage of your payroll is to your revenue. And and we can talk about where, where that should be. We can talk about um, is this the worst February you have ever had, or is it the best? Um, we can talk about forecasts. Let's talk about how you're going to get to where you want to be. Um, you know, I've, I've run businesses uh, or been a part of businesses for a really long time, and I tend to have some reasonably good ideas, maybe not perfect every time, but, um, you know, I, I'm pretty good with social media, uh, although the only thing that's ever on this page is my Facebook Live. Um, but basically, what I'm trying to say is you can use any sort of um, accounting software you please. If you are my client, I promise you I can use any kind of accounting software you want because I understand the principles behind what I'm trying to do. Um, and that's really what it comes down to. You don't want someone that just knows QuickBooks because when you start throwing monkey wrenches in, if they don't understand accounting, they're not going to understand what you're trying to do. On the other hand, um, if you hire someone that's uh, a CPA to do a bookkeeper's job, uh, one, you're going to pay way too much because you're paying for um, an advanced degree and a license. It, it, it's like paying a lawyer to do a, a legal assistance job. You don't want to do that. Um, you don't want to pay a doctor to do a nurse's job kind of a thing. It's not that um, 
doctors aren't valuable or nurses aren't valuable, but they have different jobs. I mean, they have, you know, doctors are not going to change bedpans. Nurses do that. And that's very important, but that's why, you know, doctors get paid the big bucks, right? Um, they're paying for, you know, 10 years of college and medical school and internships and residencies and, um, while nurses are well educated, they're not educated the same way. Uh, it's kind of the same thing. I've been highly educated in accounting, but not formally. And that kind of throws a lot of people off. Um, there's not been a mistake that I haven't seen or made or tried to fix. So uh, not too many that I've made. I've seen a lot, but uh, been pretty good. Um, I have CPAs come to me and tell me that I have the cleanest books ever. Again, it's not because I know QuickBooks per se. Again, I'm going to be moving away from QuickBooks. But it is because I understand the principles behind what I'm doing. Um, and I kind of harp on this a lot. Uh, the first person that I hired, actually I didn't hire her. She was hired. <clears throat> someone else hired her, um, didn't understand credit cards. We actually, I have actually seen clients and talked to clients that don't understand credit cards. And I thought those are ubiquitous, you know, in our society. In America, everybody has a credit card or 10, you know. So I thought everybody knew how to use credit cards. It doesn't matter if it's a store card or a MasterCard or a Visa or American Express or whatever. I thought everybody knew what a credit card is. It's a liability. It's a loan. And yet, I have people who are trying to tell me it's an asset. Um, credit cards are always a liability. They are, in fact, a loan with a revolving line of credit. Um, and that right there is your clue. They are credit cards. When you use them, um, when you spend money on a credit card, you're, it's credits. When you spend money out of your bank account, which where you already have the money there, you're debiting. So um, that's why we call that a debit card. Um, I'm, a, I'm interested to know what you guys think. I'm interested to know what your favorite accounting software is. Right now, mine is still QuickBooks Desktop, and that is after using um, Zoho Books, QuickBooks Online, um, Peachtree. I don't like Peachtree, um, but I can use it. Um, and some interesting online accounting that I'm still not sure that I like. Um, I'm interested to know. I'm interested to know your feedback. Um, what is it that you would like me to talk about in these videos, by the way? It kind of gets, I'm starting to really understand why TV reporters and um, especially these pundits um, kind of struggle with trying to get um, enough content in their, in their shows. What just happened? <laughs> oh, this is funny. Display. Okay. Uh, I, I have two monitors on my, on my computer, and I have one that has my software that I'm using to make this video. And on the other one, I have your output that you're seeing so that I can, you know, like talk to the screen and not be looking over here. And, uh, my computer tried to hibernate and it threw everything off. Um, and now I've lost my train of thought. I think it uh, derailed. Um, yeah, I understand now why TV shows are so often, you know, trying to scramble for any sort of content that they can come up with because it is hard to come up with fresh new content every day. Um, still working on that. Um, I hope you'll bear with me as I'm learning this new video software. I'm really excited about it. I like playing with computer stuff. That's part of the reason that I like working with uh, accounting is that 
it's all on the computer nowadays. Can you imagine trying to do this with a 10, 10 column ledger? I think I would have, that's actually how I learned how to do accounting was, was in uh, high school. And I have forgotten my teacher's name. My mother will probably tell me later. Um, I remember my best friend at the time um, and I would chat her all the way through and then I would do all of her work for her. So <clears throat> I made an A in the class and she made a B and that was because I was doing all the work twice. <laughs> um, and I got in trouble with that teacher for talking a lot. But you know, I got it. I got it to the point that that is now what I do for a living. So, um, geez, I hate it when I can't remember her name and I can see her face. Yeah, that's, I learned how to do accounting with T accounts and 10 ledger or 10 column ledgers. Um, I learned how to do it from high school and from my grandmother who owned, um, uh, an electric and plumbing supply store and that's where I learned how to do things like inventory which to this day I absolutely hate but I learned how to do it um, and I learned how to how to run those ledgers and and what that meant and that it really meant something in real time it wasn't uh, you know I know kids hate math because it's all theoretical they don't feel like they're ever going to use it but when I started work helping grandma in her shop and running the cash register, that kind of thing, it really kind of hit me that I need to know what I'm being taught at school. And uh, now here I am a couple of years later. Um, <clears throat> you know, everybody knows I'm really in my 30s, right? Um, and I'm using all this stuff that I that I learned in high school. I'm I'm using T accounts. Believe it or not, I still use T accounts to to sometimes try to figure out um, where things should go. Uh, and sometimes that can be a challenge, especially if you're dealing with the purchase of property or rental incomes. And sometimes, uh, back later on tonight, I've got to do some work for a client who has. Um, debits and credits that never went through his bank account. So I've got to set that up. That's got to be done in the general ledger and I've got to make sure that everything is correct there. But it has nothing to do with his bank account. And that's where a lot of people really get thrown. They think that everything goes through the bank account and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes money comes in from other sources and it may not be an owner's contribution. This guy has sales and royalty payments. He, he owns a franchise that never touched his bank account. And it's not until after all of this happened that the money was actually deposited to his bank. Oh, excuse me. Too many carbonated beverages, I think. You, you notice the Diet Cokes in the back. Um, it is, you know, T minus seven days, uh, six days. It's the end of the 11th, so we have six days till tax day. So you're, that's why you're getting no makeup, a sweatshirt, and uh, a lovely view of Diet Coke cans in the background. Um, yeah, what I, I guess I started off wanting to talk about QuickBooks, and I kind of, this kind of happens to me all the time. Maybe I should start scripting all my videos. Um, QuickBooks is great. At this time, as of today, April 11th, 2017, I'm still recommending QuickBooks. Not only QuickBooks, but QuickBooks Desktop. I am also looking forward to transitioning away from QuickBooks, um, which I hope to do very soon. Um, I already have some software in mind, but again, the um, the ability to back up and restore um, without having to completely, you know, delete that file online. And also, you know, I, <clears throat> like I said about the general ledger, I want to see if I've made a mistake and then be able to back out of it in the ledger. I'm kind of the same way with software. I want to see if I've made a mistake. <laughs> 
and be able to back out of it, to be able to pull that data back out and be able to, to continue to use that without having to, right now everything's in QuickBooks and that's kind of a, a challenge. Um, so, there you go. Um, QuickBooks kind of stays my favorite, although, like I said, I have, I am very open to change. Um, and when I find a software that I think is, is a worthy successor, I will transition to that. Um, I am looking to get away from QuickBooks. And part of that is just because as of today, they're very easy to use, but they're also very easy to mess up. And um, it can be kind of a challenge to, mess, to, to try to fix someone else's mistakes. Um, that's about it for tonight. Um, again, we're at six days, six official business days. Well, six calendar days, 12, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. As of tomorrow morning, we have six days till tax day. I hope you're prepared. And like I was telling this client today, right now is the time to prepare for the end of this year. We know April's coming again. <laughs> We know that 2017 tax season, which happens in 2018, is coming. Right now is the time to prepare for next year's tax season. Whether you're a tax preparer, <clears throat> which I'm very thankful I am not, or a bookkeeper or a business owner, because you know it's coming. You want to get your books in order. And you know, it's funny, every single client that I have that is disorganized tells me this every year and next year they're going to tell me the same thing. You want to be um, consistent and predictable with your bookkeeping. You want to know that that's happening on a regular basis. Every, If you're my client, it happens every week. I work on your books every single week. I have time allotted for you every single week. And I have disorganized clients every year. They say, oh, I'm going to be organized this year. And I just laugh and go, I'm going to be talking to you in March, and you're going to be in a panic again. <laughs> um, this is the time to prepare to get your 2017 taxes ready. I am huge on budgeting. I am huge on planning ahead. I don't do it very well myself, but I am huge on it because it's so much easier to plan your tax bill a little bit at a time. You, what you want, and I'm probably going to talk about this quite in depth on the 18th. I think that would be an appropriate day to do it. Um, or heck, even the 15th. I'm going to start broadcasting every day. Um, I know, I get on here and I ramble. I'm, it's a wonder anyone ever listens to me. I need to really get clear on my messages. But anyway, it's important to be able to get all of your bookkeeping done um, on a regular basis. I like to do it every week because then it's just a little bite of time and it's just a little bite of money to my clients. And, and I can get um, a lot of things done. I can stay on top of it. I can talk to my clients frequently. I can make sure everything is clear and I can, um, <coughs> excuse me, I can make sure everything is up to date. Some uh, accounting software has bank feeds. QuickBooks Online does. Uh, QuickBooks itself does, kind of, sort of, but they get so. Um, I have had a client that had their QuickBooks so linked to their bank that if I wrote a check, that money actually went out, and I hated that. I had I would have to turn that off every time I worked on their file. I mean, it just it scared me. I don't like to mess with my clients' money. I just want to record it. I don't want access to it. Um, you know, so and I and I don't like trying to. And I don't think anybody does trying to, um, where was I going? Bank feeds, bank feeds. Um, QuickBooks and QuickBooks Online, um, Zero, I think Zoho, um, 
Zero has really good bank feeds. But uh, so several of the, in fact, most accounting software these days has bank feeds. You can just hook right into your bank. You can download all of your transactions. And I have a love-hate relationship with that. I love that it's coming straight from the bank. I hate <laughs> that if it's even off by a penny, it won't match. Um, and and I, I get frustrated when I end up with a whole list of uncategorized transactions that um, just didn't match what was in the bank. I also hate that a lot of clients and some bookkeepers will depend entirely on the bank feeds, and I don't like to do that. I kind of, um, especially if I've got a client that, um, that, I have one client that I actually write their checks, um, and I like that because then I always know what's actually in the bank account after, after their checks that I've written. Um, Still recommending uh, QuickBooks. Anyhow, if you have any questions about QuickBooks, um, I am actually teaching a client about QuickBooks on Thursday morning. He asked me if I had a curriculum for it. I do not. Um, if there is interest in a QuickBooks course, please let me know, and I am willing to teach that class online. It's, it's really... Um, I really think that everybody should learn how to use their accounting software. I also think that everybody should hire a bookkeeper to actually do it. But you're able to manage um, your books more effectively if you already know what is supposed to happen. So um, that's kind of where I come on with that. You guys have a great evening. Um, it is, I'm blind, sorry you guys whatever time it is, 6.30 on April 11th, and I have got to go back to work. So, um, again, clients panicking because it's a week to tax day. Have a wonderful evening, and I will look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Stop.